So this video is going to walk you through buying a wraparound mortgage and the things that you need to know and understand, the compliance issues from the SAFE Act, the Dodd-Frank Act, property code issues, and the items of this nature to ensure that you're buying a quality note and you're going to be protected. So this video is also going to cover items that if you are considering selling your wraparound note, those items that you need to have available to present to your note buyer as well. So I see a lot of investors in today's marketplace trying to buy notes. And what becomes problematic is many of these notes they're buying are wraparound mortgages. And so first off, we need to understand what a wraparound mortgage is. And that is where, uh, by definition, a wraparound mortgage has a senior lien that was recorded first. And the wraparound mortgage simply wraps around the underlying debt. The way the money flows is, is that the borrower, the wrap note, pays the lender, and that lender pays their underlying lender. So you need to understand what a wraparound mortgage is and how it works first and foremost. So if you're looking at buying a wraparound note, I think one of the important things to determine besides the validity of the note was, was it properly originated? It doesn't matter what state you're in, but the SAFE Act is going to apply to all wraparound mortgages. And basically what they want is they want to ensure that the borrower was provided all of the RESPA, that's the Real Estate Settlement Act procedures, notices. And there's some 36 of those that have to be provided. Now, most investors don't know how to do that. And so they rely upon an RMLO, which is a Residential Mortgage Loan Originator, to do that for them. So the simple way that we, we do this is, is we simply process every borrower using the RMLO. And that helps us further in other items that we need to take under consideration. So if you're an investor who is originating a wraparound mortgage and you're intending to sell your wraparound mortgage, please keep in mind it is probably imperative if you want to maximize your dollars in selling that mortgage as well as staying compliant with the SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank Act to process your buyer using a RMLO. Now here at the OFN Loan Processing, we can help you whether you're in Texas or any state. Just check us out at theownerfinancenetwork.com. The link will be in the description below. So once you determine that the loan was processed by a RMLO and you have a loan package, you need to ensure that it was reasonably compliant with the Dodd-Frank Act. Now, not every investor and transaction is covered by the Dodd-Frank Act, but if an investor is selling their home to a consumer, they should consider following the terms and the requirements of Dodd-Frank, even though that they may not be under the Dodd-Frank Act. Basically, you have to do more than five transactions in a 12-month period to be governed by Dodd-Frank. But we like to suggest that every time you follow those rules and regulations. And so what you want to ensure primarily with that is, is that the borrower has the ability to repay the loan. We call that the ATR rule. And that means that their debt to income ratio is reasonable. The buzzwords in Dodd-Frank are, we must consider and verify the financial information provided to us by the borrower to ensure they have the ability to repay the loan. So when you're looking at buying a wraparound mortgage, you want to ensure that it was processed by an RMLO so that you can make some reasonable determinations that the borrower was provided the proper RESPA documents. And using the RMLO package, it allows you to consider and verify the financial information that was provided by your borrower to ensure that they could afford the home and can repay the loan. Finally, once you have run the gambit of the SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank, the loan processing of the borrower and ensuring that the loan was processed right, if it is a Texas mortgage, you also want to ensure it complies with some new requirements under the Texas Property Code. This all arose out of what we call SB 43, which is the RAP lending bill. And so if this was a wraparound mortgage, 
uh, the, the lender, which would be the investor in most cases, if they do more than three transactions in a rolling 12-month period, they must be a licensed RMLO. Now, other states may have that same requirement too. I don't know, but here in Texas, we have that requirement. And very strict penalties can come up with that. In addition, here in the Texas marketplace, you want to ensure that the seller, typically the investor again, provided the borrower the Texas underlying lien disclosure notice as well as the Texas Finance Code Insurance Disclosure Notice in both Spanish and English and or in any other language that the transaction may have been negotiated. I've yet to do anything in a different language, but those are the two that are mandatory regardless of what language the transaction is negotiated in. And so if you can com confirm that disclosure notices were provided properly, if you can confirm SAFE Act rules were followed and Dodd-Frank Act rules were followed. You want to ensure you know under Dodd-Frank also, are you a QM loan? Are you a high cost loan? Or is it a high price loan? And that is at the time of origination, is the APR for the borrowers, is it six and a half or eight and a half percent over the APOR, which is the average prime offer rate. And that is an index you can find online by simply Googling APOR. And it will tell you every Tuesday what that index is. So you've gone through the gambit of compliance, whether it's property code of various states, SAFE Act, and or the Dodd-Frank Act. You've ensured things were originated properly and recorded. One last thing I think you should consider doing is See if you have any before or after pictures of this property to determine what level of work was done or renovation was done. Get some proper disclosures from the seller of the mortgage if they were the originator of it regarding the property and its condition. And then you need to determine are you going to leave the existing mortgage in place or not. So let's assume for a minute you're going to leave the existing mortgage in place. Something the note buyer must consider is how do they communicate with the underlying mortgage company. You want to ensure you get information regarding that company, usually a copy of the existing note and deed of trust, the, the most current mortgage statement that might be out there as well that the seller of the mortgage would have. But once you accumulate all that so you know who the lender is and how to make payments, how are you going to communicate? Because usually you need a proper power of attorney or an authorization form to do so. So you want to ensure that you talk with your seller of the note to see if you're able to get a direct power of attorney with the person who originally sold the note or the, sold the property to your note seller. You want that so you can communicate properly with the mortgage company. Can you get an authorization form from them? Because if you cannot, you need to either consider paying off the underlying mortgage or otherwise you're going to be relegated to having a power attorney with the note seller. And that means in order to communicate with the uh, mortgage company, it's going to take two power attorneys, one from the uh, seller to the note seller and then from the note seller to you. And that starts to get convoluted. Now, it's possible you can set up an online account so that you can navigate this transaction through the online account without the necessity of a power of attorney or authorization form. But down the road, always remember things can happen. That original seller can terminate power of attorneys and things of that nature. Maybe they go into their account and they change the passwords and things of that nature and now you're preempted from doing it yourself. So there's some issues that become problematic when buying a wraparound mortgage and leaving the underlying debt in place. Yes, you can generate much higher returns on your investment by doing this, but there's some risk. There's always risk reward in all the things that we do. So ensure that you have dotted your I's, you crossed your T's, you've thought about local property code, you've thought about SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank Act, you've reviewed how this transaction was originated, you've ensured that it was compliant with Dodd-Frank even though they may not have been under Dodd-Frank at the time of origination, that it's complied with any other compliance issues that are important to know, 
and that you have the ability to deal with the mortgage company appropriately, either through proper power of attorneys or authorization forms, or through um, online accounts that may help you set up things and navigate it in those formats. It's important to do these things, but buying a wraparound mortgage, leaving an existing loan in place, can certainly yield higher returns. Now, lastly, if you're going to do this and leave that existing mortgage in place, make darn certain that you realize that that seller should have a deed of trust and be fully protected so that if something was to go awry, that seller has a way to protect themselves in the event of a non-payment. I often see where the seller only gives a deed to the investor, and then the investor, of course, sells the property of the wraparound mortgage to the borrower. The seller has limited recourse in those scenarios and simply is not protected. So know the right questions to ask, get the information, review it all before you buy this mortgage, then make your final decision and move forward. So if you're looking at buying a wraparound mortgage and especially leaving the existing lien in place, take a moment and reach out to us here at either Horn & Associates PC or OFN National Escrow Services where we can assist you and give you some advice to make sure that you're thinking through this the right way, that you're obtaining the right information that you need in order to close your note purchase. So if you like this video, take a moment, give us a like, and take a moment and comment below if you'd like to see other videos like this. So if you're looking at taking your real estate investment career to the next level, take a minute and check us out at theownerfinancenetwork.com where you can find several courses there you can take a lot of free videos that will help you navigate and better understand the creative finance world. See you guys next time.